In autumn, the northwest region wears passionate beauty, with brightly yellow terrace fields, stretching maize fields in harvest. At this time of year, I have landed in a region bearing the gentle scent of autumn. There are innocent smiles and dishes which have welcomed me to this wonderful land. The northwest region of Vietnam bears itself particular beauty all year round. However, the months of September and October are the most ideal time for visitors to come and wander in this iconic landscape. Besides the beauty blessed by Mother Nature, the northwest region is home to many ethnic minorities who wear and cook exquisite cuisine. I'm here today to try this cuisine and culture behind it. So follow me to find out more. So the first place that I have arrived in the northwest is the Nia Do Commune. It lies in the Bao Yen district of the Lao Cai province. Despite being placed in the northwest, Nia Do district is blessed by Mother Nature herself, with distinguished geography, which is considered as a basin located at the foot of the majestic Ho A Mountains. A basin landform consists of an area of land enclosed by higher land such as hills and mountains. The Thai villages sit along the banks of the Nam Luang stream, still retaining the cultural beauty of traditional stilt houses, palm tree forests and the signature cuisine of the Northwest. After asking around for help, I was directed to the house of a famous brocade weaver in the area. Here, I can learn more about the unique culture of the Thai and the typical autumn food of this land. How long have you been weaving like this? Từ năm 15 tuổi thì cô đầu học thì phong tục người Tài của cô thì cái dệt này lâu rồi, tức là từ đời trước chuyển lại cho cô. Do you weave all year round or is it just certain seasons? Dệt thì vào cái mùa nông nhàn, tức là đến nhất là cái mùa thu này, cô thì hay dệt thổ cẩm này. Can you describe some typical dishes in autumn uh, in Nha Đô? Mùa thu này mùa này là đang mùa chám. Tức là mình đi hái chám. Bạn có biết quả chám không? No, it's the first time I've come across it. First time. Thì mùa thu là mùa chám. Người Tài nghĩa ở đây đấy. Người ăn nhiều nhất là canh gà này. Hai nữa là chám nộm. Cả hai món đấy thì người Tài ở đây hay làm. Ở trên rừng thì có nhiều quả chám tượng trưng dệt cái hoa thổ cẩm này. As what the woman said, the pattern of chum or the diamond shape weaved on the brocade is crucial and should never be changed to preserve their culture. Besides, chum fruit can be cooked as a delicious dish. Chum is also a reminder of autumn in the Northwest. I'm quite curious about the flavor of this particular fruit and how it develops when it comes to cooking. This is just one of the chum trees I have found in the area. I was also lucky enough to meet a local man who can share more about this captivating tree. Today I would like to ask um, if the Thai people, do they grow this tree or does it appear naturally? 
cây chám như thế này thì cái nguồn gốc của nó là mấy đời nay rồi nó là chám tự nhiên How many years can you harvest fruit from this tree? Tuổi thứ 8 trở lên thì mới có quả Thế nên nếu như cây này là mà có còn sai quả ấy, thì ít nhất mỗi một năm phải thu hoạch được 300 kg Ừ, kg Tại ở đây tôi là thích nhất là cây chám Người Tài ở Nghĩa Đô này cũng cũng rất là, là, là ngay thẳng như cây chám mà Gắn bó với cuộc sống của nhân dân là nhà nào mà có hai ba cây chám là cũng sung sướng ấy có tiền này có ăn này được quả chám ăn là tuyệt vời lấy cái quả này đập ra xong nấu với với canh gà giò như thế này này ngon lắm tuyệt vời <cười> so now I really want to give this fruit a taste I want to taste it raw and when it's added to particular dishes but you can't make an omelette without cracking some eggs, right? Yo, it's the first time I've seen a ladder like this, but I'm going to take my chances and try and climb up and get some sham. <laughs> oh, no! Okay. Maybe not. <laughs> I don't think this is going to take my weight. <laughs> Feels very unstable. I think I'm going to need some help. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Whoa. So after a little struggle, finally a local guy came to help me out. <laughs> Whoa. Good job, man. Good job. He made that look so easy. <laughs> Chum is mainly grown in the north of Vietnam, and it can be easily found in the northwest. Mostly, chum trees here are naturally growing, with a wide age range from 30 years old and more. The people in this area all love to eat wild grown chum. To Thai people, it is considered that when chum can be harvested, it means that autumn is on its way. That has to do with the fact that chum, although it looks every bit like a fat green olive from Italy, actually it grows on the Canarian album tree. Yo, so this is a very unique way of picking fruit that I've never seen before with my own eyes anyway. Using a ladder like this, like natural homemade, it didn't feel very stable to me, but he made it look super easy. And I just hit the fruit down with this long stick. You gotta be careful, <laughs> they're coming down quite fast now. Wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, so now there's loads of fruit falling down from the tree. Luckily enough, because I'm gonna need a lot to prepare for tonight's meal. All right, I'm gonna pick in some. Oh, new lamp. Wow. Yo, I managed to get quite a few. Here's my result here. This particular one is called white chum. Wild chum trees are usually not vicious like grafted ones. But when eating, people have the feeling of acridness, sweetness and sourness spreading to the throat and gradually absorbed onto the taste of the tongue. Chum contains many nutrients and vitamins such as vitamin D, and vitamin C. Today, Miss Viet is going to help me cook chum with chicken soup. She said to one off the acriness of chum, it should be pounded before cooking.
Miss Viet's stirs chicken meat marinated with fragrant spices for about 30 minutes. Until the broth turns a light yellow color. From there, she can put chum into the pot and braise it for about another 30 minutes. The light acridness of chum will be mixed with the taste of chicken that can create a sappy dish. Another unique way that you can use chum is that you can slice it and you can mix it with other ingredients that can make a marvellous salad. The flavoursome fruit is hidden in this dish. Giving this salad an extra depth of flavour is grilled fish. This kind of fish is carefully caught in clean water to ensure a luscious taste. Herbs are carefully collected from the garden to bring a fresh flavour to the dish. Grilled fish is served by slicing with herbs. The ratio is one layer of chum to one layer of fish and herbs. All are added carefully in the right proportion. A simple but delicious dish has finally been made. Okay, so now we've just finished making these two wonderful looking dishes. Here we have a cham salad, including fish, it's got peanuts in there, the cham, herbs from the garden. And here we have a sort of cham soup. Uh, it's got like a chicken stock in here, chicken meat, cham, and also has herbs from the garden. It smells so good. So now it's time to tuck in and try. Okay, Andy. Oh. So good. The flavors balance out so well. It's such a nicely balanced dish. The, the bitterness from the cham has like totally gone and it just balances so nice with all the other flavors. Right. Let's give it a try. Oh wow. Oh, so good. I can find the taste of chum in this dish. Mild sweetness gradually absorbs on the taste bud. This dish is like the beauty of autumn itself and has enabled me to understand why the people of the Northwest slowly fall in love with autumn. Chum here in the Northwest can not only make luscious dishes, but also can be set as a place for many generations. Under the shade of chum trees, children can play around to create sweet childhood memories. And I also find myself back in that innocent world. Autumn brings not only pleasant feelings, but also the freshness of rice paddy fields, especially when they are turning yellow. The colour the crop bears when ready for harvesting. Now I will try a dish that captures both the freshness and the sweetness of autumn. So now we just finished picking rice from the rice fields. It's super hard work, but very beautiful in this scenery. So now we're gonna go and make a special traditional dish um, related to autumn. So follow us to see how it finds up.
quay như thế này Xong rồi bạn lấy chân lên đây nhé Lấy chân lên đây đạp Đây, đây Đây, chân thế này Xong rồi đạp để cho nó quay cùng một chiều ấy Xong rồi cầm cái đũa này Mình giữ This is the first time I have ever tried to use a pedal thresher like this. Everything is rustic and simple. I particularly enjoyed this process a lot as it's extremely traditional. So this machine here splits the rice from the, the seed. It takes a lot of strength to get it going, but it's very efficient at what it does. So, better get to work. And this process dates back generations, but it's still used to this day to maintain the culture of the town. Sắp có cơm ăn rồi Giờ mình tấn bạn làm cái này nhá Làm như thế này nhá Như thế này nhá Bây giờ sẽ làm như thế này nhá Đấy Bạn làm đi Lên cao lên Cao lên Cao lên The Thai in the Northwest love to make gom in autumn. Making gom means that they will have a good harvest. Each grain of rice is a drop of people's sweat through hard labor. They treasure the land and they want to retain the natural flavor of gom. I can feel the warmth and the happiness when we work, we smile together and we prepare for a good crop. So to make gom here in the northwest of Vietnam takes a lot of processing. I hope it's worth it and I can't wait to give it a try. This process here, probably the hardest one because you have to sit next to the fire for a very long time and it gets very hot, especially in this climate, you know? So, let's get to it. Oh, smoke in the eye. <laughs> Miss Vang Thi Tom shared with me a secret to keep a low heat when roasting the sticky rice and stirring so that the rice grains are cooked evenly. Thai people in the northwest still retain their manual methods during the process of making comb. They use a wooden pestle and mortar so that each grain of rice will be smashed into the aroma of rice husks and wood to create a sweet and fragrant flavor that only people here in the Northwest can preserve. I realized that when pounding roasted sticky rice, the two people working together have to keep the strength in the same proportion. This will prevent the rice from being thrown out of the mortar. Actually, this job is not easy at all. <laughs> oh, this is very tiring work, but it's got to be done. Oh. <laughs> The roasted sticky rice must grow through this process eight times. Pounding, crushing, and sieving.
to turn the rice into light green appealing grains. Okay, so here we have the final result of the comb and it's been a real privilege to experience this. Such a long process, but it's worth it. The taste is really fresh, it's got a little bit of sweetness to it and it's very fragrant. So now we're in the final process of wrapping it in the banana leaf and apparently there's one more secret I don't know yet. So let's find out. Okay, Chi. Thế là cốm ở đây ở Bản Liên đấy. Dạ, vâng ạ. Có hai hay là hai cách ăn, hai cách làm chế, làm để ăn ấy. Ừ. Còn có thể là mình bước một thì mình ăn như thế này. À oh, ok. Dạ yeah, dạ. Yeah. Hai nữa là mình cách thứ hai là mình sẽ gói bằng cái tàu lá chuối này để mình gọi là làm bánh cốm. À ah, ok. Bạn có thể làm thử và Mình để một lúc, mình có thể ăn thử cái bánh cốm ở tại nơi đây Dạ, vâng ạ, ok Vâng, không, không bạn gấp ở đây lên Bạn dựng cái tay bạn lên xong, đây À, vâng, ok xong để... Mình xem Nhìn cái chỗ dưới thì nó có một cái à, yeah, lớp yeah. nhỏ nhỏ, à, cái lỗ nhỏ nhỏ để mình Nó không chui được cái hạt cốm, nó không chui mm. được xuống dạ. Mình sẽ phá nước Ok, vâng Đây, bây giờ bạn cầm, cầm ừ. đây Từ cái mép này. À, vâng. Đấy. <cười> Đây, xong bây giờ nhé. Mình sẽ cho tí cốm. Cốm mình đã chế biến xong nhé. According to Miss Tom, cốm can be edible right away after being pounded. But another way to process this is to wrap it in banana leaves so that the aromatic flavour of the comb will be brewed into the banana leaves. Moreover, comb can be carried away to eat without losing their elasticity. Cho comb vào trong. Đẹp. Cho comb vào trong này luôn. Oh, okay. Cho comb vào trong này luôn. Mình cho vơi vơi thôi, bởi vì mình không cho vơi là mình không gấp được như thế này ừ. Là nó thành cái hình tam giác À ok Ồ oh, oh. Mình chỉ cần chắc cho nó đều Như đầy cái ấy này cái rồi là mình gấp lại Oh, ăn luôn rồi. After putting comb in the banana leaves, I pour in the boiled water, folding the banana leaves carefully, and wait for about 15 minutes. Oh, so this is ban kom. First time trying it, so let's give it a try. Oh, sticky. Wow. Ngon. This is delicious. It's got the flavor of the kom, and you can taste the sweetness from the banana leaf as well. Ngon. Rất là ngon. It only takes 15 minutes for a surprise to happen. The sticky, fragrant flavor and elegant shape of the comb finally comes out. The taste of new sticky rice mixed in different ways. The taste of elegant, sweet and sour chong.
the happy taste of smiles, the joy of a new harvest. All precious things combined have created an unforgettable memory for me.